This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. What did you want to be when you grew up? I waffled between professional baseball player and fighter pilot when I was really young. Then I went through a phase of wanting to be an architect or to anchor sports center. The latter of those indirectly led me here, which is at least in the right industry. Now, I'll guarantee none of you ever said you wanted to grow up to be a YouTuber or a TikTok star. But those are some of the top answers that children give to that question today. A few years ago, we would laugh. Today, we probably still do, but we shouldn't. An online content creator or influencer, if you will, is a skilled craft person whose earning potential in today's world far exceeds that of most of the jobs these kids' parents have. To laugh at them and dismiss that career path because we think it's short-sighted and foolish only exposes us as being short-sighted and foolish. I'll tell you more about why in today's commentary. Before we get to that, it's time to pay another visit to a customer of Tagger to see how they use the influencer marketing platform that is our presenting sponsor. Tagger is a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and measure success. We've been hearing from Alexandra Walsh of Three Day Blinds of late. She's told a lot about how the premium window treatment brand uses Tagger, but toward the end of our chat, she just said, have your listeners contact me. That's how much she's willing to recommend and go to bat for this software. Here's what she said. If anyone is interested in hearing how it works from the brand side, I'm happy to happy to talk to someone. That's what helped us is we actually had an experience talking to another company who worked with Tagger, and that just gave us the confidence in the program. So I'm happy to help, happy to talk to anyone about it. Awesome. How can people find you online? You can head to either my LinkedIn page, just Alexandra Walsh. You can find me on the content marketing specialist for Three Day Blinds, or you can email me at alexandra.walsh at three day.com. That's one heck of an offer. I'll make sure links to Alexandra's LinkedIn profile and Three Day Blinds are in the show notes. Thanks to her and the company for sharing their use of Tagger. To learn more and get a demo of Tagger to see if it's right for you, just visit jason.online slash tagger today. That's jason.online slash tagger, T-A-G-G-E-R. Stop laughing at kids who say they want to be influencers. I'll explain why next on Winfluence. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. When it comes to dating, your first move can be anything. You just have to make it. With Bumble, it's easy to start the conversation and see what good things come your way. A dance partner, Laughter over drinks. Maybe the perfect kiss. Ready to find out what happens next? Download Bumble and make the first move at Bumble.com. My friend Eric Hansen had a blog post last week that caught my attention. Eric is a social media and public relations consultant, speaker, and influencer in his own right, based in Minneapolis. He's also one half of Hanson and Hunt, a great PR and communications podcast that is also on the Marketing Podcast Network along with this show. Eric's post last Tuesday was titled, Will Your Kids Go to School to Be Professional Social Media Influencers? I know, most of you chuckled at the notion, but you shouldn't. Think about it. We're talking about a profession that anchors an entire industry that is projected to be in the $20 billion range, yes, with a B, this year. And guess what? That number ain't going down. Sorry, I slipped into my no-shit Sherlock mode and Kentucky accent there for a second, but it underlines the point. Eric did a nice job of reporting and sourcing the reality of the world we now live in. 
He wrote of a morning consult report that surveyed a sample of Americans aged 13 to 38, so Gen Z and millennials. They asked them various questions about influencers. Most young Americans say they would accept money to promote a product on one of their social media channels. And when I say most Americans, I mean 86% most. 54% would become an influencer if given the opportunity. Heck, 12% of them think of themselves as influencers already. Can you blame young people, though? I'm here to attest to the fact that influencers with even as few as 50,000 online followers are able to charge thousands of dollars for just a handful of social media posts each month. And if the audience plus the influencer's persuasive ability over them is just right, brands are happy to pay that amount. My daughter wanted to start a YouTube channel when she was 10. I helped her fool around with some ideas. We even did a short-lived series called Girl Asks Dad, where I answered her tween growing up questions with silly answers. But then she landed on posting her own reviews of young adult fiction books. She now has 283 subscribers on YouTube, but over 500 followers on Instagram. By the way, I need you to help me out. My 13-year-old daughter has 200 more YouTube subscribers than me. So I've started ripping Winfluence to YouTube. So go to jason.online slash YouTube and subscribe so I can please avoid further embarrassment. Back to Eric's article. He reports that in China, you can actually go to school to become a professional influencer. According to a Pan Daily article he links to, the courses taught there include short video editing, social media marketing, e-commerce, and other aspects of the new, quote, trade. Is it just me, or aren't these the sessions and online courses we've been attending at adult professional industry conferences in the United States for the last 10 years? Eric rightfully points out that these are the courses that make great social media marketers. And that's a profession we can all agree has taken off and is legitimate today. China is teaching this stuff to kids in vocational schools. We should be too. Back in the fall, I was interviewed by an organization called Kentucky to the World. It's an economic development and education organization in my home state that helps educate and inspire entrepreneurship across the Commonwealth. It focuses a lot of its energy in small towns and rural communities whose economies have long been dependent on coal or agriculture to industries that are no longer sustaining them. The point I made in my interview was we need to start teaching the skills of a social media influencer, an online content creator, at the elementary school level, then build out more sophisticated curricula for high school and into college. Because the digital first world we live in today provides an avenue for a kid from anywhere to create content around gaming, art, comedy, politics, fashion, beauty, sports, whatever they're passionate about, and helps them monetize that content online. If rural communities embrace the potential of today's children to become online content creators, then their hometown kids don't have to leave to blaze their path in the world. The more that can earn a livable wage from the comfort of their own home, the fewer will migrate away. When that happens, populations sustain and even grow. Tax bases stop going down and to the left. Young people stay. They earn a living. They spend their money at local businesses. They pay their taxes. And so on and so on. What do you want to be when you grow up? For a couple of decades in eastern Kentucky, the answers may have varied, but the reality was most people grew up and moved away. There weren't good jobs at home. They needed to be closer to cities, to factories, to opportunities. Today, the internet, social media, the attention and creator economies have all brought those opportunities home again. So the next time a kid says, when I grow up, I want to be a TikTok star or a YouTuber. Swallow that laugh and ask them how you can help. This is normally the point in the show where I jump in and encourage you to send in your questions, topics, or feedback. Before I ask you this time, we have our first listener voicemail. 
Mark Duke is a B2B influencer consultant and all-around CMO brain for hire in Great Britain. He has also introduced me to a number of podcasters for my Marketing Podcast Network project. He listened to last week's commentary and had this to say. Hi, Jason. It's Mark Duke here. I thought I'd uh, finally send you a voice note as per the uh, request at the end of the podcast. I've just listened to your cracking 15-minute number on uh, influencer consultants. Uh, Absolutely spot on, particularly in terms of your pricing, uh, 50 to $150. I'm kind of at the higher end as a B2B tech influencer consultant. Um, so it was really, really well put together. So I really liked it. I guess the only differentiation I would have added to it, and I'm, I'm sure you'll get to it at some point, is the whole uh, B2B versus B2C piece. Um, but I know you like to be generic. Uh, really enjoying the stuff. And obviously, um, we'll keep furnishing intros as and when they come through and keep up the great work. Thoroughly enjoying it. Take good care and uh, have a great rest of the day. Bye. Thank you for the kind words, Mark, and for breaking the ice on listener voicemail. I would love to have everyone who listens featured at some point, so do send in your questions and comments more in a moment. Mark, to your point and clarification of B2B versus B2C, I do think that B2B influencer marketing consulting can require fees on the higher end of that range. There aren't as many tools that zero in on B2B influencers, and many of them tend to be academics industry and trade executives and such. So the legwork requires more time and expertise. However, I don't see a big separation in pricing in the United States between B2B and B2C consultants. That's not to say it doesn't exist or shouldn't, just that I'm not aware of a big gap between the two here. Anecdotally, I will also say, Mark, that your country, Great Britain, has always seemed to me anyway to have a more academic understanding of and treatment of comms and B2B comms than my American colleagues. So I would anticipate a bigger separation between the two in the United Kingdom. Thanks again, Mark, for the comments and the contacts and the friendship. Cheers to you. If you would like to voice your opinion or offer some feedback, or you have a question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on, Inspire an episode by emailing me at jason at jasonfalls.com, just like Mark did. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the Book as a thank you. And Mark, if you don't have a copy of Winfluence the Book yet, I'll make sure you have one very soon, even from all the way across the pond. Play us out, Mr. King. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.